I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I haven't had a cigar in a couple of days. I'm, you know, looking forward to firing up this one and uh, getting things underway. What about you, Brian? How's uh, everything going down in Atlanta? Well, uh, aside from me uh, killing every every light uh, around the house today, uh, yeah, things are going well. A um, little tired, but uh, I've got my uh, I've got my uh, Camacho El Legendario uh, Gorilla Finger or Elephant Trunk or whatever it is. This giant, massive thing. Uh, I've got it lit up. It's uh, uh, yeah. So that's I, I guess I'm taking us into what we're smoking. So that's what I'm smoking, and here's my big Kego Chino. That's what I'm drinking. Uh, what are you guys drinking and smoking? No, I haven't used that in quite a while, <laughs> but uh, it's still, I think it's I think it's in the kitchen under the sink or something, probably collecting dust. I've got <laughs> this time around, I've just got a big uh, glass of uh, water in a, a Coke cup, and uh, I've got a little drink of uh, Buffalo Trace bourbon that uh, I'm going to give a shot tonight. But uh, so far, so good. No Shrek cup, though, unfortunately. I'm not, but uh, I'm going to light mine now, so why don't you start talking, and uh, by the time you come back, I'll be done. Alright, well, segment one is sponsored by the Dog Watch Cigar Radio, and uh, if you're not familiar with the show, that is uh, Bob McDuffie and Dal Roush. They put on a, a weekly cigar radio show, runs about two hours. Uh, fantastic show. I mean, uh, lots and lots of information there. Uh, with Bob and Dale, you're going to find thoughtful conversation, considered opinion, and a touch of insanity. Now, uh, question number one comes from Joe via MySpace, and uh, this one's directed at Jerry, so I'm going to have you answer it first. He says, uh, quirky question, Jerry. Why do cigars unravel when you accidentally light them uh, the wrong end? So, uh, what do you think, Jerry? You, uh, you pop a cigar in your mouth backwards, you light up the head of the cigar, why does it unravel? Or does it unravel at all? Well, I, I, I think you're you're onto something with the cap. It's uh, it's it's all the way it's wrapped. It's wrapped to uh, come. Uh, I think it's a it's a combination of, of, of tension of the uh, the leaf, of course, the compression when it's well. No, actually, it's in the mold before the lit wrapper goes on. So scratch that. Uh, it's it it's wrapped up. It's just it's meant to be bound at that end. So if you start smoking it at the head, that's the the tension and the little bit of glue is what kind of keeps it all together. And when you uh, burn through that, they're uh, you're giving it nothing holding it in place. So it's kind of I'm trying to think of something else in the real world that it would correspond to. But yeah, I'm a little tired tonight, so I'm I'm a little uh, a little bad with these things here. So. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, I can understand. But I, I do, I do feel for Joe. I can understand that some of these quirky cigars out there, when you look at them, sometimes it's not entirely obvious, especially with some of the figure autos, which way you, uh, which way you smoke them. Uh, so, I, I can see why that would happen. But uh, you know, I would, you know, make a point of asking, or just make sure you look at the label. The label always will face the same way when you're smoking a cigar. I don't think I've ever seen one that. That wasn't uh, set up so if it was sta standing upright from the foot, it, you couldn't read it normally. If it's upside down when you stand it up, you've got it. You're you're looking at it backwards or upside down. So uh, that's that's my thought on it. It's it's all about the way it's rolled. So uh, uh, you got anything to add to that, Walt? I, I don't have a, I didn't have too much myself. So yeah, sure. I, I can add to it a little bit. Um, okay, when. The Okay, for, let's forget about the filler and binder. That's uh, that's more or less a shell that's together. The the leaf, or the uh, the wrapper leaf is what's coming off when you light it backwards. Now, um, uh, picture a book. You open the book. You've got the spine down the middle. Uh, that spine down the middle is your vein, the one big vein stem that runs through the leaf. And uh, when they split this leaf, they cut that out of the center. So you have a left half and a right half. And there is definitely a left and a right because uh, there is an upside and a downside to the leaf. Um, the veins will be more predominant towards the sun and whatnot, so it has to be oriented a, a, a certain way. Now, cigars are always rolled from foot to head, regardless of whether you're using a left or a right. That means you're either going to roll the, the cigar left or you're going to roll the cigar right. It always starts at the foot, works its way to the head. Now, you put the cigar down on an angle on the leaf and you 
you give it some tension and you start rolling the cigar. Now, uh, I guess it's the fr there is no pectin on the roll there, so I'm guessing that it's the tension. So you uh, got a Twitter or a Skype request there that threw me off. But anyway, you uh, you start to roll the cigar and uh, the leaf is moist, so uh, as it begins to dry out, it shrinks and uh, it just gets much tighter on, on itself there. It binds up. So that's what keeps it from unrolling. Now it spirals down towards the head and then you have a cap that encloses the, the head of the cigar and uh, that's the part you're supposed to snip. Now when you snip that, this, the, uh, the leaf still is bound over itself so you're not going to get any unraveling. Now if you light it at the other end, you break that tension and now everything just gets loose as it works its way down. So, uh, right, yeah, you burn through the cap and you start working towards the cigar, you lose all your tension. So. Uh, that's my take on it. Um, if you uh, you light it on the wrong end, you're going to lose the tension that you're you're getting by you know stretching that leaf and, and rolling it tightly, and uh, everything's just going to kind of break down and pop apart. But that's what I've got. Anyone they spark any other thoughts there? Light bulbs go off. Well, you, you know, I, I was talking bef before this. I've been putting out light bulbs all all night. You know, every, everywhere I flip on a light switch, they go out. So. Uh, <laughs> No light bulbs here. <laughs> that that sounded good. That's kind of that's kind of what I wanted to say, but didn't have the faculties to actually put into words tonight. So conveniently, I, I got to roll a couple of cigars the other week, so I, I got a little feel for for what happens and, and what you know what's going on there. Plus, I, I watched uh, Sam at the roll at these uh, nub launch events roll dozens of cigars, so. You kind of get an idea of what's going on when you watch someone do it, and you start picking up on things. And uh, and then once you get your hands in it, you realize just how hard it is, and uh, and then you really get a feel for what's going on. So if you ever get the opportunity to uh, take a junk cigar, take it apart, and maybe try to put it back together again, I mean that's that's real dedication there. You know, there's not a lot of people where they're going to dissect their cigars and put it back together again. But if you do, you're going to learn a lot in the process. You'll be able to see you know, which leaf goes where, how it's cut, how it's formed, how it's rolled, and it's pretty interesting stuff, but then again, you're going to lose a cigar in the process, but anyway, that's all I've got to say about that. Well, just from watching, uh, I was going to say, just from watching uh, them rolling, I, I've never rolled one myself, uh, but just, I, I'm just thinking about how, how quickly I would develop carpal tunnel syndrome doing that, because just looking at the way they lay it out and the way they're like they really they're they really uh they put a lot of uh um tension on their uh uh i'm sorry i'm getting i'm getting a skype call somebody's trying to interfere with our recording clearly but anyway they they put a lot of tension on the leaf you can really see them you know their hands have got to be just like arnold schwarzenegger's strength hands so you know when they're bunching it when they're when they're rolling it maintaining the tension that's both skillful and I think it's got to be hard on your hands. I mean, that's got to be something that you, when you first start doing it, your hands have got to be aching after you roll for a day. I, I can only imagine just, just by looking at people rolling. So uh, that's all I had to say. And sorry, I was distracted by somebody trying to, uh, trying to break into our recording session here. <laughs> Well, uh, when I rolled that cigar, it was uh, the most hideous thing I've ever seen, to be completely honest with you. It was lumpy. I, uh, when, when you roll the cigar, when you start to form the cap, you make a cone-shaped cut at the top. And uh, that forms your, your cap, and then you do your twist and whatnot. And uh, I cut it the wrong way. And uh, so when I started to form the cap, I had a big hole that I could see the binder through. And it, it was... Uh, by far the most ugly cigar I have ever seen in my life and uh, you are definitely not going to lose me to another career. Uh, maybe on occasion as a hobby I'll dabble in it but and uh, I'll, I'm going nowhere fast as far as uh, cigar rolling goes. It was, it was probably the same one that I got but uh, the one not long ago I was talking to Sam who uh, happened to be in Nicaragua warming up for these rolling events. So he was down in Nicaragua helping roll the nubs. And uh, his first day down there, I think he did five hours or something like that. He said from his chest up, just ached from, you know, you're, you're up high to begin with, you're reaching for things, you're, your hands are moving around, you're pressing down on the table. 
he was saying how sore he was from it. And so I, I can't imagine sitting down and doing it for eight hours a day, five days a week, or six days a week, you know, however it works. It's, uh, it, it's got to be really hard. And, you know, uh, I can't imagine what your hands would feel like afterwards, but, you know, it's, everything just must hurt. It does seem simple, though. You know, it seems like a very simple, you know, action. You know, oh, I'm just reaching for this, I'm reaching for that. But you try staying seated for eight hours a day. I, I saw it when I went from building furniture to a desk job. It was killing me just sitting in a desk using my fingers all day, typing away on a keyboard. So I, I can only imagine the transition to, to trying to roll cigars for you know an entire day. Well, let me just ask you this: Have you ever seen a fat cigar roller? I, ne I never have, ever, but I mean, that, that could be because they're not eating at McDonald's, but I'm, I'm also thinking that uh, there's a lot more physical effort being put in there than, you know, my fat ass at this keyboard, you know, so uh, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking that's a workout, I'm thinking that's keeping people fit, you know. <laughs> Alrighty, question number two. Uh, this is from, from Chris via YouTube. I was at a hookah bar not too long ago, which allowed the smoking of both cigarettes and cigars. I was embarrassed when I started to smoke at CAO America, which I brought a few days before, oh, bought a few days before, and the individuals I was with began complaining about the smell of the cigar. Oh, really? Um, my question is, with the ever-vanishing areas where us cigar smokers can enjoy a, a fine cigar, where do you find the best place besides your home to have a cigar? and enjoy the company of other cigar smokers. Also, what is your favorite Maduro smoke? Just kind of a second little jab in there. What's their favorite Maduro smoke? Um, let me throw this over to Walt, because he's been uh, last to answer. Uh, what do you think, Walt? Well, uh, I don't go to a lot of uh, smoking establishments as far as uh, bars and restaurants go. And uh, usually when I do, I don't ever think to, to actually bring a cigar to begin with. But uh, where I smoke the most of my cigars, aside from my home, is uh, my local cigar shop. We don't have any kind of ban here that uh, prohibits me from lighting up in my local tobacconist. So uh, that's where I spend the majority of my time outside of my home, as far as my smoking goes. Um, you know, there's been times when uh, when I've gone to a bar and had a cigar, and you do get those awkward looks, and, and there's really nothing you can do about it. I, I really don't see you being able to change someone's opinion. They've got it set in their mind that that big fat cigar just really stinks and their cigarette is just fine or their pipe is just fine. Because it, it doesn't really matter what you have, you know, you start to be, build a tolerance for it. Um, before I started smoking cigars, I didn't think they smelled that great. Now that I smoke cigars, I, I don't notice them too much. Now I'm sure a pipe smoker is the same way. You start getting used to the smell of the pipe. You don't, you don't mind it at all. Now you, you reintroduce a new, new aroma like a cigar or a cigarette. It's going to be different. It's going to clash a little bit. Same thing goes for the cigarette smoker. How, you know, how often do they realize they, st they smell like cigarettes? But uh, they can smell the pipe, they can smell the cigar and whatnot. So it's, uh, it's just a matter of getting everyone to sort of live in harmony, more or less, at these establishments, which you know, in, in a lot of cases is very difficult to do. The only time I've seen that really happen is at a cigar shop that also sold cigarettes. You know, no one ever complained to the, the person next to them about what they were smoking. Unless, of course, it was uh, sort of like a flavored cigar with an incredibly pungent aroma. Uh, that's, that's the only point I've ever heard someone complain about the, the smell of a cigar at a, at a place like that. Um, and on to the second question, my favorite Maduro is the, uh, the Oliva Siri G Maduro in a bellicoso size. So, uh, Jerry, why don't you chime in and, and give us your opinion? I'm sorry, I, my, I'm playing with my train set right now. It happens to, uh, I happen to have both a freight train and a uh, commuter uh, subway type of train that run past my, my place. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing, especially late in the evening. I think they're done. You, you can carry on, Jerry. Carry on. Well, yeah, I, I believe the train has, uh, it's passing now, but it's not, it's not honking, thank God. Um, well, you know, I, I've got an interesting take on this because uh, uh, Atlanta's got quite a, I, I would say, uh, one of the best, well, I, I don't know, I haven't traveled enough to say one of the best, but it's, it's got a great cigar culture, uh, and it's, it's got, uh, there's, quite, there's a number of places around outside of cigar shops where you can, you know, go ahead and light up. There is a bar right around the, the corner from where I live 
Uh, great selection of beer, and uh, they, they keep cigar ashtrays, and you'll see guys in there at the bar smoking cigars, and nobody ever complains. It's That's great. Um, it's it's generally pretty smoky, too, because uh, there'll be a couple of guys smoking cigars, and there'll be a, a ton of people in there smoking cigarettes. Um, there's another place uh, uh, down in town that's, that's pretty nice that actually is a full-on cigar bar, so um, you... I don't think you, anybody really would, but you might get looks for smoking a cigarette in there. But, uh, you know, I've seen people smoking pipes in there, too. It, it, no issues. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I probably am more likely to smoke at home or, or in a cigar shop. But I, I do like stopping in those, those bars occasionally to, uh, to uh, light, up a, light up a cigar and, you know, maybe have some food or just have a drink or something like that. That's kind of nice. Um, in terms of my... My favorite, my, one of my absolute favorite places to smoke a uh, cigar is, is actually over in Portland, Oregon. It's a place called, uh, oh geez, I'm going to forget the name of it. It's McMinniman's Place. Ah. Oh well, if, if I remember, they have a great selection of port. It's a little hole in the wall place, and it's usually full of cigarette smokers, but uh, you know, there's, there, there'll be people there buying, uh, smoking cigars. They don't have a, hardly any selection of cigars at all, but uh, it's a fun little spot. Um, Favorite Maduro smoke, geez. Uh, I just, I kind of spaced that when everybody else was talking. I, the first thing that came to mind, uh, I don't know if I'd say it was my favorite, but uh, I know I liked it a lot, was the Christoph Maduro. I thought that was a great smoke. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just kind of blanking on it. I also uh, I also like the, the G Maduros that, that Walt mentioned, too. So, um I'm not sure if any of those are my favorite, just because, uh, you know, I'm kind of blanking right now, but I do like both of those, so I have enjoyed those. So that's that's pretty much what I got. Anybody else have any more they want to add to this? Okay, take it no. So uh, let's see here. I guess we'll have to pass the uh, the, the baton over to, uh, to Jerry. Uh, actually, I can just go ahead and introduce it. It's voicemail. It's uh, from Carlos, so we'll go ahead and play that now. Hey, Walt, how are you doing? This is Carlos from New Jersey, and I've got a question for you guys. Um, what would you say is the most embarrassing cigar moment that you've had personally? And, uh, I mean, this goes out to you and to uh, Brian, and I'd love to hear what Jerry has to say. Um, what was uh, the most embarrassing moment you've had personally uh, in the presence of others or just on your own that now that you, you know, with this question you'll have to come out and admit it, admit something, but... Uh, Mine would be uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm sitting down here in my office, and I was on a webcam with a buddy of mine, and I'm smoking a cigar, and I'm getting down to the nub, and I, you know, there's not much really to hold on to anymore, and I'm trying to hold on to this thing, and the cigar fell out of my hand, rolled down my shirt, down onto my uh, chair that I sit on in front of the computer, and since I, since I sit down in a reclined position the cigar like rolled back up into my shorts and it burned me right right in the inside of my thigh and it, let me tell you it, it did not feel good um, and meanwhile I'm here jumping around hopping around in my chair and this guy is watching me on his end of the computer wondering well, what the hell am I doing and I had I had to admit that I just burned myself so uh, yeah I'd like to know what was uh, your most embarrassing moment alright guys keep up the great work bye You know, I can't think of anything terribly embarrassing that I've ever done with a cigar. I mean, nothing comical like picking it up backwards and, and putting the lid end in my mouth or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I've, you know, I, I've been in, at places like, uh, one time I went to a, a party at a friend's house and uh, we were all carrying on and whatnot and I uh, lit up a cigar and having a good time and I got sidetracked for something and I put the cigar down I went to pick it up a minute or two later and I couldn't find it so I lit a second cigar. Um, I think at that point I got called over to play horseshoes, so I put the cigar down for a second, I went to go pick it up, it was gone again, and um, finally I lit up a third one very frustrated. Later on that night I found out that the railing that I was sitting them on was leaning a little bit, so I put them on the railing, they fell on the ground, and uh, I had like three cigars in a pyramid on the ground all in one spot, but aside from that, I mean, uh, that was about the most embarrassing experience that I can remember. Nothing hysterical, just uh, more irritating, like, uh, you know, losing cigars over and over and over again in the same spot. Alrighty, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of like you, I, I'm not really thinking of anything that's just terribly embarrassing that I've done. 
I um, I don't know. I, I there might have been a little bit of embarrassment that I, I felt with all of the uh, with all of the uh, uh, attention that the uh, the the Africa uh, the Don Lino Africa got. Uh, you know, and, and it may have it, it was possibly a little embarrassing when I thought back about it. The uh, the flaming cheetah butt uh, comment I made over on Dog Watch Cigar Radio. But I, I kind of look back at that and smile and think that was just a stroke of genius. You know, I will, I will have forever made my mark in people's memories as the smoking cheetah, cheetah butt guy. So, you know, I, you know, there are worse things. You know, I, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, the, the most possibly embarrassing for other people uh, type of thing I've ever seen because the person who did it wasn't embarrassed was uh, was uh, Sandra of uh, Miami Cigar Rep, and I recently put, put this up on. Uh, not Stogie Review, but my own website, where she was uh, intentionally putting the uh, lid end of a cigar in her mouth. In fact, trying to st uh, stand a, a cigar uh, on its ash on her tongue, which she did finally accomplish with a little... I think she barely got it to... and I just snapped the picture at the right time, but I think that a lot of people were embarrassed for her. And a couple of people were like, please, stop it. Stop it already. This is just killing me. So uh, I thought it was cool. And I was just taking... I, I took a thousand pictures trying to get that so uh um yeah wow the people are this is the second person who's tried to invade the the recording of your questions my answers <laughs> but uh anyway so i mean that's all i've got I, I i've never really been too embarrassed i mean i've dropped ash on myself and uh a couple of times and kind of felt like an idiot and had my wife yell at me for dropping ash on the couch before but uh not, not terribly embarrassing, kind of like, yeah, that's what happens. Anybody else got anything? Well, mine's going very well. I mean, I'm getting that same sort of creamy taste that you're getting, uh, some woody flavors. But, uh, you know, the, the thing that strikes me odd about this cigar is I've had, I, I don't know, a fair amount of these. Um, my local uh, smoke shop carries them. I've picked up a number of them. And uh, I've always picked up the natural. My, my smoke shop doesn't carry the Maduro. And I remember the natural being lighter than this. And uh, this band definitely says natural on it. So um, it's, it's kind of striking me odd. I mean, this is the darkest El Legendario I think I've ever seen in, uh, in a natural wrapper. Um, and I know we were talking about this a little bit before the show started. But, uh, you know, it, it, it smells pretty good. It tastes great. Uh, it's just uh, the, the darkest El Legendario I've had that, that wasn't a Maduro. What about you, Brian? How's your uh, your legendario going? Well, uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know how far I'm into it. I haven't been keeping close track of it, but I I, I like it. It's it's got kind of a. I, I'm thinking I get more more wood than anything else. I haven't been paying really close attention to it, but I I remember the. Uh, it's got a, a fairly memorable flavor, so I was I remember it and kind of can compare it to my, in my mind to the way it tasted before, and it it's consistent. I. Uh, um, yeah, Woody, and, and, and kind of an interesting kind of, uh, it, it's, it seems like it's smoking really wet on my palate for whatever reason, which sounds strange, I think, but, uh, uh, that's, that's all I, that's, that's what's coming to mind. I'm thinking with the, uh, yeah, the band says, let me see if I can get that in, in the, uh, the video in a way that people can see it. It says natural on it. Um, and I'm thinking, I, I wonder if these were misbanded and if we're smoking a collector's item here. And, uh, you know, we're going to find out later that, you know, somebody somebody uh, would have paid paid us good money for this and we'll all be uh, very disappointed, you know. <laughs> but uh, the, the other important thing about this dimension is this was uh, part of the uh, the cannonball that uh, was, was fired at us all by Captain <laughs> So, uh, you know, thanks, Joe, for, for the cigars. Uh, we appreciate it. And I don't know if we're kind of violating our agreement to not review them or not by talking about them. I, I hope that noticing the flavors isn't uh, too much. Ah, jeez. It sounds like there's a drug bust or something going on next door. Great. <laughs> Man, what a night. Uh, people trying to, you know, invade uh, invade via Skype. And, you know, I, I, apparently the entire world's coming to an end outside. So, uh, anyway... Uh, I guess that's it. I think we're ready for a production break, unless anybody, anybody's got anything else to say. Yeah, they were, uh, they were unbanded at that time. Since then, they moved to this uh, patent-pending weird-looking band that goes over the foot. I think it was right around the same time uh, the Rocky Patel Edge uh, was introduced with the band on the foot. 
a, a very deep, dark looking uh, natural cigar here. And and who knows, maybe Brian Hewitt's right, and uh, uh, this is supposed to be, we're smoking up a collector's item. They're misbanded or whatever. But uh, listen, we're you know that does it for segment one. We're gonna take a production break here, and uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll go to segment two. <laughs> so uh, so stay tuned.